The city is for some glamorous, stimulating, prosperous. Only recently has it become dangerous. Hi, good. How's it going? Are you in Buenos Aires? I am actually right now I'm in Mexico. I've been here for a couple of months. I'm traveling, so I, I'm in Mexico nice. right now, but soon to be back in Buenos Aires. Nice. My um our assistant director is Argentine. Um oh yeah. And she yeah, she saved my life on this film and she became <laughs> such a good friend. And, we we watched the World Cup together. And I, <laughs> said I've never seen her cry and pace and pray and all all of the emotions. <laughs> I know I, I know what you I know what you went through. I know what you went yeah. through. <laughs> so that 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 must be such an experience for you. Yeah. Uh, well, first of all, I would like to congratulate you on the movie. I'm I'm a huge fan of thrillers and everything related to to crime. So the movie is amazing. But what I really love is that you have a, a different approach to this kind of stories because you focus on on on, on journalists. So I wanted to know a little bit about that to to take on a on a very peculiar character working on these type of stories. Yeah. Um... You know, I think that um, I love true crime and I also, I love journalism stories. And um, when I started reading about this case, I discovered a really fascinating murder mystery, but just telling the story from the perspective of a detective just never really clicked for me. Mm. And then I heard an interview with this reporter, Loretta McLaughlin, um, and it turns out she broke the story of the Boston Strangler. She was the first reporter to connect the murders. And she actually named the Boston Strangler during the course of her reporting. And I thought that would be a really interesting way in, but there was very little information. Um, but so I, I tried to find out all I could about her and, and the other reporter who she worked with, Jean Cole. And there was very little information available about them. And then I discovered um, that Jean's granddaughter was a friend of mine. I discovered a personal connection to them. Whoa. And she introduced me to both of their families and they gave me access to everything, old photographs, journals, clippings, and gave me, told me the full family histories. And the more I learned about them, the more I grew to admire them as people and as the work they did as journalists. Um, so at that point, uh, I thought that, um, you know, this would be a story worth telling and, and telling it from their perspective. Jack, I think I found something. Three women were strangled over the last two weeks. You're on the lifestyle desk. You're not covering a homicide. I think the murders are connected. And well, as you were saying, this is based on a true story and you, you got the chance to actually get into it when meeting uh, the, the, the people are around it. So I wanted to know as a director, uh, how different it is to work on, on a story that is based in true events. Yeah, I mean, look, there's always an obligation to the truth and to the real people involved. Um, so I did a ton of research. That was how this process started for me. And I got to know, you know, the families of Loretta and Jean and also spoke with everybody I could who was around at the time and who was either connected to them or the story in some way. Um, and so I really, you know, it was important to try and tell the most authentic story possible and and get the spirit of who these women were trying to get that right. How many women have to die before it's a story? They just confirmed number four. Police aren't talking. Never seen them this tight-lipped about anything. I don't care if it's one killer or four. We're gonna catch whoever did this. You have the suspect. And well, uh, you you were saying you're you're a fan of true crime and, and this kind of stories. And I wanted to know which are your 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 inspirations. Uh, it can come from from movies. It can come from anywhere. I'm working in, on on this genre. Yeah. Um... You know, I think some of my favorite movies are journalism stories, um, whether it's, you know, All the President's Men or a movie like Zodiac, which has a lot of similarities to this story. Um, and, you know, and I really love good journalism. I really respect and admire good journalism and, um, you know, felt like this was really a, a compelling way to, to revisit this story.
for, through the perspective of these two journalists. I, t I totally felt like I was watching a kind of Zodiac or a David Fincher movie. Yeah, it was what it, it felt like that, that scenario and it was it was amazing. Uh, but also, uh, I think that what you you gave to this story, the, the possibility to see it through the eyes of, 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 of Kira's character, I think it, it was great and, and it felt it felt fresh. So good. I'm glad it's great to hear. That was really great. So thank you so much and for this time for talking to me. And I hope the movie does great because as I was telling you, I love these kind of stories, but it feels different. It feels fresh. And I think that's something really cool. Good. Thank you so much. Oh, I'm so glad to hear it. It's it's great to meet you. Thanks for thanks for talking with me. Thank you and have a nice day. There's more than one lunatic out there, and you're gonna get us both killed. A safe little world is just delusion.